Panic in the UK, supernatural thriller based on real events, sparks first PTSD cases in Britain. This footage was shot by parapsychologists investigating the case. It's in here, it's in the glory hole. Greetings, fiends. In 1992, the BBC showed a Halloween night event called Ghost Watch. During the 90-minute broadcast, panicked viewers called the phone number flashed upon the screen, thinking that the show was indeed real, even though a disclaimer had been made beforehand. Much like the classic Orson Welles modernized radio broadcast of H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds, Thousands of people believed that evil supernatural forces were at work inside the home of the Early family, and that the sinister poltergeist might even spread through the network and into their very homes. Ghostwatch Story BBC reporters perform a live, on-air investigation of a house in Greater London where poltergeist activity is believed to be taking place. The early family, consisting of mother Pamela and daughters Suzanne and Kim, have been tormented by a foul entity they refer to as Pipes. Four respected presenters and a camera crew attempt to discover the truth behind, quote, the most haunted house in Britain, unquote, expecting a light-hearted scare or two and probably the uncovering of a hoax. They think they are in control of the situation. They think they are safe. The viewers settle down and decide to watch for a laugh. Ninety minutes later, the BBC and the country was changed, and the consequences are still felt today. The BBC switchboard took an estimated one million phone inquiries and comments on the night of the transmission, and after the first showing, Ghost Watch was banned on the BBC. I'm staying. Children, come on. No, Sarah, Sarah, stay where you are, please. Sarah, stay there, please. Don't go upstairs. Why? Because we hear that Suzanne has got out of bed, but she's not yet appeared. Here, I don't know she's, why. Not, she's not appeared on the landing. From real supernatural case to mockumentary. Writer Stephen Volk found his inspiration for Ghost Watch in a real-life case from the late 1970s, referred to in the media as the Enfield Poltergeist. This case occurred in North London and involved psychokinetic activity allegedly witnessed by police, as well as a spirit speaking through a young girl in a demonic-sounding voice. Much of the documentation in Ghost Watch resembles that of the Enfield case, including the photograph on the cover of Dr. Pascoe's book. Kimmy, Suzanne, are you okay? You all right? Come on. It wasn't me! It doesn't it matter! Wasn't me. It doesn't matter! Ghost Watch was directed by Leslie Manning. Written by Stephen Volk, who has many supernatural-oriented productions to his writing credits, including the 2011 film The Awakening and the series Afterlife, Ghostwatch stars Michael Parkinson as the main host or presenter. Parkinson is known as an actor in such productions as Madhouse, Q5, Love Actually, Neighbors, and The Damned United from 2009. Sarah Green as the reporter, who also starred in The Man Who Knew Too Little from 1997, Doctor Who from 1963, and Aladdin and the Forty Thieves from 1984. She was previously married to Mike Smith, who stars as the phone-in presenter in Ghost Watch. Craig Charles also stars as the Man in the Street interviewer. Charles is famously known as the character Lister in the incredibly popular and long-running BBC sci-fi comedy series Red Dwarf. 
Jillian Bevan, who plays Dr. Lynn Pascoe, is also a very popular British TV star, having appeared in productions such as Foil's War from 2010, Hamlet from 2015, Father Brown, the TV show from 2016, she was in one episode, The Windsors from 2017, all the way up to 2024 with a musical production of Bonnie and Clyde. The 1992 quasi-found-footage horror film Ghost Watch predates the Blair Witch Project by several years, and the producers of Blair Witch Project said they were directly influenced by the film. Pet Sounds The rumor that the showmakers had wanted to include a high-pitched tone that would agitate viewers' pets during the broadcast is mostly true. Writer Stephen Volk suggested it, but as soundtracks are capped for transmission, meaning limited in pitch, volume, etc., even if permission had been secured to go ahead with the idea, technically speaking, it would not have been possible. First documented case of PTSD in Britain. Ghostwatch earned the dubious honor of being the first TV program to be cited in the British Medical Journal as having caused post-traumatic stress disorder in children. I, I can't hear anything. So. Are we going? Come on. Downstairs. Just outside. Um, lost it. Have, we, have we lost the link completely? Sarah, are you, are you all right? Well, call us now. Lasting impact. Ghostwatch had such an impact on its audience that throughout the years since its airing, ghost stories or creepy pastas began to arise online. Some claimed that the BBC had removed some of the most horrifying scenes from the DVD versions, and the ones who happened to catch it live on TV claimed to have extreme trauma from watching them. Stories range from weird broadcast interruptions with hidden cryptic messages, hallucinations, and extended gory and violent scenes, none of which have any proof whatsoever. As the show never aired on British TV again, these stories gradually became embellished and more far-fetched by online gossipers. I hope you enjoyed this look at Ghost Watch. As always, please like and subscribe. Thank you.